today I want to talk about red light. I must be the worst person to sell to. I've been an engineer for 25 years and I don't want to hear people spiel. I want to rip the thing apart and understand how it works, how it can potentially work for me. So when it comes to recommending something, it takes a really long time of use for me to be comfortable telling anybody else to use it. I've been using red lights for 10 years. So at this point, I feel I'm comfortable strongly sharing what I feel works, what has worked for me, and what can potentially work for other people. This is an example of a red light that you can take with you, you can plug it in. It has the things that you want to look for, airflow. If you don't have something that is designed in a way where it's removing the heat that it's causing, it's telling you, A, it's not powerful enough, and B, it wasn't designed by people who are well versed enough in the technology to understand the kind of heat that it's going to generate when it's doing its job. The red light that I use most often is actually about four feet long and it's on a stand and I use it before I go to sleep every night because that's when our circadian rhythm is aligned to repair. So our body typically would see red light in the sun when the sun is going down. That signals the melatonin to release and a numerous uh, signals numerous other key items that need to be in line for our body to repair. So what we're doing by using a red light like this is telling our body to go ahead and start the repair cycle. This is something that you could use on a wound source. You could use it to heal your skin. You could use it for muscle repair. This is actually two different types of lights. This is red light as well as infrared light. And they're two different wavelengths that interact with our body and produce different signals and our body does the repair. So I'm not a big believer in topical things. Topical is exactly what it sounds like. It goes on top. If you think about concrete, it would be very difficult to take powdered concrete and drop it on top of concrete that is set and firm and expect that they're going to adhere to each other. It just doesn't work that way. Topical things can look great at the moment, but once you wash them off, they have a very limited ability to produce repair within your body. Now, there are absolutely oils and creams and things that you can put on your skin that make your skin look great, but your body has to accept it and Put it into the repair cycle for it to be a continual thing otherwise it's going to last as long as you keep putting that thing on top of your skin so one of the things that i love about red light and the types of technologies that i seek to employ in my regimen is that it actually gives the signal to our bodies when our body sees the light what happens is the mitochondria get excited they start to produce more energy. And within that cycle, what happens is more ATP is created. And we need ATP to do things like produce muscle and utilize our energy and perform work. How does that relate to a beauty regimen? Well, whether you're an athlete or whether you're interested in the anti-aging aspects of how, let's say, red light could help tighten your jawline or your neck or help your re muscle repair happen faster or maybe reduce the wrinkles around your eyes or your forehead. Well, what happens is the mitochondria now are working harder because this light tells them make more ATP. What happens then is that process interacts with our vitamins, what we've absorbed. So if you notice when you go away and you're getting more vitamin D, it feels like you just look a little healthier, maybe your lips are fuller, maybe your skin feels a little bit more plump and elastic. Well, that's the vitamin D and the calcium and the chain of absorption that needs to be present for your body to look healthier and feel healthier. And sometimes we notice that right away and it feels like it's that sun-kissed glow. Well, a lot of that is happening here, but without the UVA and the UVB. Another thing that the red light can do 
what in conjunction with the infrared is red light is more about the skin, the collagen production, and the um, elasticity, wrinkle reduction, all of that. The infrared goes deeper into organ repair, muscle repair. So when you do them together, you're actually doing multiple different, you're performing multiple different functions of repair within your body. And that's why we sometimes start to feel better very um, close to the proximity of performing the red light therapy because these functions are all working together. For instance, if I have any sort of um, backache, if I've been uh, sitting in a chair all day long and maybe leaning over to my computer, eventually at some point you're going to start to feel um, a bit of an ache, get up and stretch. I can put the red light on my back for 10 minutes and unbelievably be relieved because of what's happening here. There are many studies that have been done on red light that actually show how this repair is happening. They show the mitochondria getting excited. They show the ATP production. And that, to me, is worth explaining the science behind the beauty. So if you're interested in more about red light, we are going to do a whole series on it. This one I like to take with me when I travel. I do have red lights in different places where I often uh, travel because I don't wanna have to um, miss the, the benefits of this and the continued benefits of um, the repetition of it. I also have another portable device. This is just for your eyes, right? So this is gonna help um, signal to the body to continually have more energy in the mitochondria, produce more ATP, i.e. now where you have wrinkles and loss of elasticity and loss of collagen, this is helping with that. I've had this for, uh, this may be the second red light that I ever purchased. The first was in one of the um, facial muscle exercising um, low current um, devices and it had a, a red light ring around it. So this is number two. This came pretty far down the line and this is a little much. Really, it is. When you put it on, it's, it's a little much. Um, but what it does is it disperses all of these little diodes so that it can get all the angles of the face. This is less intense on my skin than the full body red light that I use. Let's head over to the full body red light and check that. So this is full body red light. The panel is four feet long and you can stack these in different arrays so that you can get the full effect that you want. If you're an athlete and you want your full body to be covered from head to toe, if you're doing a lot of leg recovery, leg exercises, and you want to make sure that you can cover your whole body and the length of your muscles. You might want more than just one panel. One panel works for me. Um, I do alternate it. So if I want to do upper body, I'll focus there. If I want to focus on my head, if I want to focus on my hair, if I want to focus on my shoulders, I can just slide a bench underneath the panel where I want it to go. What you're seeing here is, and the camera won't fully pick it up, but some of these Every other one actually looks like it's on. And as you can see the shadow on me, there's a diagonal where you're not seeing that row. And that's because that row is infrared and you can catch a little bit of a green glare there because the camera is actually able to pick up that wavelength that our eyes can't see right there. Yeah. so. To the naked eye, that's just going to look like the light's not on. But the camera's actually able to pick up more than our eyes can pick up. And what this is, is a staggered array of red light at the 660 wavelength and infrared light at the 850 wavelength. 
these wavelengths have been studied in extensive studies that have been in different hospitals and with medical researchers, including with NASA and the US government, as well as numerous other hospital and research studies to be able to understand what wavelengths benefit different types of growth um, and things that you're trying to achieve. So certain things will be much more beneficial for muscle recovery, joint aches, back aches, um, as well as ocular health, hair growth, collagen production, reducing wrinkles in our face. So as you learn more about red light and infrared light, I hope that it will inform your purchase so that you don't buy something that maybe isn't going to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish and you have a little bit more of a discerning knowledge about the product before you go ahead and spend any of your hard-earned money on it. Just as a reminder, five of the benefits of red light are associated with our skin and the recovery of the upper layers of the skin. So skin wounds as well as wrinkles, collagen production, the ability to absorb and retain calcium is associated with the increased energy that the mitochondria experiences when it actually sees these wavelengths through our skin. The deeper elements of the infrared light actually speak to more of a whole musculoskeleton metabolic effect. When we combine these two together, we're getting things like stem cell regeneration, calcium regulation and absorption, homeostasis benefits, our body's ability to produce heat and regulate our temperature, ATP increase, which energizes our mitochondria, um, and ATP increase comes from the increased energy of the mitochondria, and the mitochondria produce more ATP, which we need to do the majority of the work functions, including building lean muscle within our bodies and our metabolic functions. So as you can see, there are so many benefits that are far beyond the beauty and anti-aging realm and more in the longevity and the whole health of the body that have to do with the signals that the red light and the infrared light give to our body. If you want to learn more and get some product codes on some of the products that I've used and recommend and have found great benefit in my life, then you can find them in the comments below. I will be rolling through some different products that I've been using for a long time and explaining the differences between what you're trying to achieve and why you might want to look at one product versus another product.